How the Reindeer Got Their Antlers by Geraldine McCoffrin, illustrated by Heather Holland. As soon as the animals were made, they began to quarrel about who should be king. I am the fiercest, said Lion. I am the noisiest, said Rooster. I am the smartest, said Penguin. But I am the best, said Proud Little Reindeer. An angel held up his hands. When the maker made you, he did not make you an order of greatness. To show that he thinks of you all as kings and queens, I shall give you all crowns. So on each head he placed a different crown. A wreath of fur for lion, a scarlet coxcomb for rooster, a black and white crest for penguin, and something special for reindeer. No sooner were the crowns given out than the animals began to quarrel about whose crown was best. Mine is biggest. Mine is brightest. Mine is prettiest. But mine is, is horrible, cried proud little reindeer. Staring at her reflection, she saw that the angel had given her a crown like a lopped tree. To stop the animals from quarreling, the angel gave them kingdoms in different parts of the world. The lions he sent to the grassy plains, the roosters to the farmlands, the penguins to the gleaming south. But turning to the little reindeer, he found her gone. Ashamed of her ugly knobby crown, she had run away, away from the stares and laughter of the other animals, away from the glaring sunlight. As she ran, she passed through deserts. How good it would be to feel hot sand underneath foot each day, she thought, but dared not stop in the desert. She passed through fields of crops. How good it would be to nibble on green plants every day, she thought, but dared not stop in the fields. She passed through woodlands. How good it would be to stand in the dappled shade, she thought but dared not stop for fear of being seen. On and on she ran to the farthest, coldest regions of the earth where no other animal cared to live. And there she made a home. Her children and her children's grandchildren were born amid the snow and ice, a thousand generations and each with a crown of antlers. For 10,000 years, the reindeer hid themselves away. Then, one winter day, a man in a coat of red was pulling his sleigh across a frozen lake. But he slipped, bump, and fell on his bottom. Every year my load gets bigger. I'll have to find someone to help me pull my sleigh. He tried to get to his feet, but the ice was glassy smooth. Bump! He sat down again. So Santa cupped his mittened hands to his mouth and bellowed with all his might. His shout carried around the world. Who will help me pull my sleigh? I must deliver my cargo tonight. Not I, said the lion. I've done enough today. Not I, said the rooster. That sleigh is too heavy for me. Not I, said the penguin. I see enough of snow and ice. The reindeer peeped out from behind the frosted trees and said, We will pull your sleigh for you, if we are not too ugly. My dear friends, said Santa, you are a very welcome sight. The soft frogged feet of the reindeer did not slip on the ice, and when Santa had climbed in among the bright packages, 
they set off across the frozen lake. What is in your parcels that must be delivered tonight? asked the littlest reindeer. Why, Christmas presents, of course, said Santa. But the reindeer had never heard of Christmas. Once a year, I deliver presents to every girl and boy, he explained as the reindeer trotted over the ice. But it must be done on Christmas Eve. No other night will do. Tell me, friends, why do you live in such a lonely place as this? We hide ourselves away because of our ugly crowns, they replied. Then tomorrow, to thank you for your help, I shall give you all golden crowns in place of your antlers. That shall be your Christmas present. At that very moment, the silver blades of the sleigh slid over the thin ice. With a lurch, the sleigh began to slide backward into the water. The tree! Reach for the tree! cried the littlest reindeer. With that, the oldest reindeer stretched out her neck and wedged her antlers in the branches of a fir tree. The others tangled their horns in the harness straps, and then they pulled. And no one pulled harder than the littlest reindeer. They heaved and strained, and they hauled the sleigh to safety. When it was done, they looked a very sorry sight, their antlers broken, the ice strewn with velvet. You dear, wonderful, marvelous, exclaimed Santa, mopping his face. Now you will really need those golden crowns. But the oldest reindeer said, I think not, thank you. Gold is soft and bends too easily. Gold would have been no use tonight. Another nodded. Over the years, our necks and heads have grown big and muscular. Pretty crowns might make us look foolish, or even uglier, said a third. And we may be ugly, but we are very brave, declared the young littlest reindeer, holding his head high. Ugly? Bless me, said Santa. You're the best, most handsome animals in the world. I'll just have to think of another present. That's all. Ever since that night, the reindeer have helped Santa deliver his presents on Christmas Eve. Now, though, they draw the Christmas sleigh not only over the snowdrifts and frozen lakes, but out across the night sky among the tinseled stars. For his present to them was the yearly gift of flight, one single magical night of soaring over desert woods and fields. Despite the sights they see spread out below, they are now so fond of their lonely northern lands, where the moon fills the sky and the northern lights pour down that they no longer wish to live anywhere else. Every year, though the youngest reindeer look eagerly among their presents for a crown, it is a crown of antlers they are hoping to find, for as you know and I know, and the full moon know that antlers are the pride of any reindeer. The end. <laughs>